Today I'd like to start off uh, reading a little bit from the advancing guitarist uh, because today's uh, lesson will be about playing up and down on one string. I have some a PDF, uh, a couple PDFs available for download that you can look at that will reference this uh, lesson. So uh, this is a book of the advancing guitars that a lot of guitar players have played out of. So and have studied out of. So I have some some different notes that I that I took over the over the years. So I'm going to read uh, five excerpts from the um, from the book as a tribute to um, Mick Goodrick, and then also to see why I'm going to be um, doing the kind of lesson I'm going to be doing today. This is from page nine. The point that I'm trying to make, which may be one of the most important points in this book, is that position playing is not even half of it, probably not even a third of it. Equally as important as position playing is playing up and down one string. I'd even go so far as to say that it's more important than position playing just because it's so seldom explored. In addition, I might add that standardized methods for position playing have been in existence for some time, whereas methods for playing up and down one string are practically non-existent at least in the West. This is from page 10. So these are all just uh, highlights that I did uh, many years ago. All of the above contribute to support my personal contention that you have no real understanding of the fingerboard until you've spent a lot of time playing up and down the strings individually. If all you know is position playing, you can't even begin to see the whole fingerboard. In fact, you can't even understand the proper uses and advantages of position playing until you've played up and down on the strings a lot. Okay, this is the next page, uh, page 11. Why would you play up and down one string with only one finger? Because you've learned things that can't be learned by any other way. I, I actually added it. Because you'd learn things that can't be learned any other way. This type of approach is what I call disadvantage exercises. By, deliber by deliberately working within the confines of a particular limitation, i.e. only one finger or two or three, we can learn much. Some people might ask, why bother playing with only one finger when you've got four? You can't play much with one finger anyway, but the question is really, how much can you play with one finger and what could you learn? When playing with only one finger, do you rely on fingering patterns or note locations? Is there any conceivable use for a technique whereby you cannot play what you normally play? And then in the, in the what I wrote here is Hendrix playing the Star Spangled Banner, so he plays a lot of that up and down on one string. And this, so this is a page 12, so I have two more excerpts before I get into the, the, the body of the lesson today. Actually, I guess you should play up and down one, one string as much as you need to play. I'm really being a great help, aren't I? When you seem to reach your own saturation point, stop for a while. Do something else. You can always come back to playing up and down one string. When you come back to it, you're more than likely see some things about it that you didn't see the first time. A lot of things in music are like that, probably all of them. And this will be my last, the last excerpt from The Advancing Guitarist. At the bottom of page 12. Don't change strings. If you're soloing against G mixolydian on the low E string, stay there. Be patient. Don't jump to another string just because you start to get bored or repetitive in your soloing. Maybe play less for a while, or maybe more, or maybe softer, or maybe louder. They don't call it improvising for nothing, you know. But stay on that one string. For the time being, that one string is your entire instrument, your entire musical voice. You really should listen to some good sitar music. 
So that's uh, my tribute to make a couple quick things, uh, quick quick little stories. So um, I saw Pat Metheny many years ago at uh, Eisenhower Auditorium at Penn State, and he signed my book right next to where it, on on the on the dedication page. This book is dedicated to Pat, partially because he made it possible, but mostly because he never needed it. So I got uh, Pat Metheny to, to, to sign that um, many years ago. And then um, I'll, I'll leave a, um, a link down below. Um, I have a, a student, uh, J.J. Tomchik. I'll leave his uh, YouTube channel a link uh, below in the description. So uh, J.J. was one of my students back in high school, and you know, excellent student, and he's surpassed me quite a bit in his, his jazz playing. So he went to Berkeley School of Music. I believe he was summa cum laude, you know, graduated in three years. So he studied with Mick Goodrick when, when he was there. And then he got uh, Mick Goodrick, uh, J.J. got... Uh, took my my copy and had Mick Goodrick sign it. It says to Mick all the best Mick Goodrick. So that was that was pretty cool. So All right. So that was a, a couple excerpts from the Advancing Guitarist. So if you look under the description uh, of this video, you'll see um link to two different PDFs. So one is going to be ascending uh, modal motifs, and then the other one will be descending modal mo motifs. So what I'll do for today is I'll kind of break it up into, into two sections. I'll do a ascending section, start, and then I'll do a descending section, and then I'll kind of explain uh, how I'm, how I'm appro approaching all these things. So, um, so the first example I'll do is I'm going to be playing against an E minor to F um, uh, vamp backing track. So to improvise, the, the licks I'll be playing, I'll be starting from the E, B, G, and E, and then I'll go oh, up using those uh, melodic uh, motifs that you see on the PDF. So the first one, so E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E. Okay, so then I, what I write on the PDF is sometimes I'll hammer and sometimes I'll slide. Okay, then the next one start from B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B. And I'll add some vibrato to those notes. Okay, next one, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, G. And then the last one for this part of the example, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E. Okay, so I'll play along with the backing track with that, and then I'll go on to the descending section. So you'll have to look through the PDF to find each of those. So it's organized pretty, the library is, is uh, uh, organized pretty well. Uh, motifs on the first string, second string, third string, and fourth string. So here comes the backing track. And I'll start off by, by playing the arpeggio uh, two times, and then I'll play through the examples. Okay, so now I'll go on to uh, descending. So the descending is going to start from the same notes an octave higher. So I'll start from the E, the B, the G, and then the E, and then you can look on the P on the second PDF for the descending the descending version. So once again, the backing track is just E minor to F back and forth. So E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, and then and then here because I I'm running out of room. And then I'm going to end up on the E there on the second string. Okay, e, once again, uh, either 
<laughs> hammer or slide. I'm just, I'll just change it at my discretion. Uh, from the B string, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, B. And in, in general, I'll probably default to the slide just because I can use uh, my first or second finger. I think I can, uh, my, with my technique, my, the vibrato's a little better. Uh, it's G string, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, F, G. Yeah, so just starting from the E, B, G, and now the E, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, E. Okay, so now I'll do, I'll do that along with the backing track. So this was just my way of c going up and down a one string, uh, playing essentially a scale. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Phrygian mode against an E minor to F, and then just doing something rhythmically with it and just trying to make it, uh, you know, into something, uh, you know, musical. So here comes the backing track again. I'll play the arpeggio. My starting places. So that's uh, kind of like a second example. Now, the next thing I do, I'm not going to do every single um, motif on those pages because there's a lot there, but you can certainly you know, play around with those. So the next thing I'll do is I'll do go back to the ascending. I'm going to start from the G, the E, the B, and the G and, uh, for this next, uh, next one. So, so the, the, um, the motif G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, G. So either hammer or, or, or slide there. Okay, now starting from the E, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E. Now starting from the B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B. And then starting from the G, G, A, B, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, G. Okay, so now I'll play it with the backing track. Start with the arpeggio first. Starting points. I'll do one more example for this for this video. So now I'm going to start from the G, the E, the B, and G. This will be uh, descending. Okay, so G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, G. Then starting from the E, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, E. B, A, G. F E D C B A B G F E D C B uh, A G F G. Okay, so now I'll do that with the backing track. Uh, first, I'll do the arpeggio, and then I'll I'll play those with the uh, those uh, melodic motifs with the backing track.
Okay, so so that's all I'm going to do for today. I do have other vamps. Um, I might do some videos uh, in, in in the future, um, A minor, D minor, and 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 so on. Um, so let's see if there's anything else I want to do for today. Um, well, maybe I'll just do uh, maybe a one ex just one example of the A minor. So, so this would be an A minor to D minor. So what I'll do here is I'll start from um, I'll just start from the A here. So A E C A. Okay. So that so then you can look on the the PDF. This will be ascending A B C D E F. G A B G uh, G A B A. Then start from the E E F G A B C D E F E. C D E F G A B C D C. And then A B C D E F uh, G A B. Okay, I'll play that. Now I'm going to play that with a different backing track. Let me just get that uh, booted up here. I guess it's just going to be an A minor uh, to D minor. So I'll play the arpeggio one time, and then I'll play the ascending. So these are all available on the PDFs. You just have to look around in the in, in all the licks uh, to find these particular starting points. So now I'll do the same thing, but uh, descending. So I'll be starting from A, E, C, and A, and these will be on the second PDF. Uh, you know, it, you can have a you know, first page, second page, third page, and fourth page, and so on. So A, G, F, E, D, C, uh, B, A, G, A, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, E. C, uh, B, A, uh, G, F, E, D, C, B, C. And then A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, A. I'll do that with the backing track also. A, and starting from the E, uh, A, E, C, A. Starting points. I got this far. <laughs> I'll go ahead and do, I'll just do one more example. I'll do D minor to G now. Uh, so this will give you just some different things that you can play around with, different different ideas. So how about for the D minor one, I'll start here. I'll start on the F, the D, the A, and I'll start on this F here, uh, kind of like what I did uh, for the for the E minor. So it'll just be a different starting point. So once again, the, so the... Uh, the ascending ones are on the first PDF. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, D. A, B, C, D, D E, F, G, A, B, A. And then F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. 
So starting from that, so I'll, I'll play the D minor arpeggio, and then I'll um, you know play the, the this lick. So so this particular uh, track is a D minor to G. This is iReal Pro and uh, Modal Vamps. Uh, I like this pop smooth. This is a metronome about 75. Um, so I, I I thought that that would give me enough time to to do the do the shifts smoothly, and then also I wanted to be able to do a little vibrato at the end just to give it some uh, give the lick some character. And then I'll, I guess I'll, I think for today I'll just do one, one more example, and that'll be it. So that's I did the E minor, I did A minor, now D minor. So now I'm going to start uh, just an octave higher: F, D, A, F. And you'll you'll find all these licks. I'm not really changing them. Uh, I'm just playing pretty much what's on the on the PDF. So F, E, D, uh, C, B, A, G, F, E, F, D, C, B. A G F E D C D A G F E D C B A G A and then F E D C B A G F E F. Okay, so I'll, I'll start off. I'll play the arpeggio and then I'll play the de the descending uh, melodic motifs with the backing track. Okay, so just to kind of recap, so you just go to the PDF and just, you know, you know, play the, all the different licks. So I have them, you know, first string, second string, third string, starting, uh, I think I do like six on each. So, so B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, like six on each, on each string. I think these work really well on the, the high strings, but certainly you can, you know, do riffs. You can do them there. Yeah, you can do kind of more rockish uh, kind of licks uh, on the bottom. So I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed listening uh, from R Mick Goodrick's book, The Advancing Guitarist, uh, excellent book, uh, uh, Rest in Peace, uh, R Mick Goodrick. I found out pretty recently that he, he passed, I think, um, I'm going to say like late, late November of, of uh, 2022, so uh, this type of playing is something that I've explored a lot on my own, uh, in my own practicing, and then I've done you know, all different kind of videos where I, where I talk about this. So I think to end off today, um, I'm just going to improvise using some of these ideas. I'm going to go back to the E minor F as, as, as I was preparing for this video for the past, I don't know, I've been playing through this stuff about, about a month or, or so, all these different concepts, uh, trying to decide how to, how to present it. So, so um uh, there's a lot of material here, and uh, you can explore it uh, uh, on your on your own. So E minor to F, um, like for example, what I might do here, I might do something like I might just kind of break it uh, break it apart, or I might go or. 
and then maybe it maybe switch strings uh, back and forth and then and then also I'll be improvising so maybe I'll put, it, put some bends some pentatonic stuff and things like that so this will be how I'll end the video and this is how I end a lot of my videos with an ending improvisation and um, we'll see what happens okay thanks for listening and, and watching <laughs>